All right, 6.6, .6, trapezoids and kites. We're gonna use uh, the properties of trapezoids and the properties of kites you guys asked yesterday. When I gave you that nice little sheet, you had your parallelograms, uh, the quadrilateral, the square, the rectangle, the rhombus. You guys were looking at all those, and, uh, and then you saw the trapezoid and the kite, you're like, well, what's up with those? And I said, well, don't worry, we're gonna get to that. And here is it, here it is, in its beauty. All right, so. Our objectives, we're going to talk about the trapezoids and kites. I mean, can't get any more obvious than that with the fact that the title is Trapezoids and Kites. You should have the title page at this point. Don't worry, it's not getting too rocky. All right, so first thing we're going to talk about is trapezoid. Trapezoids are quadrilaterals with exactly one pair of parallel sides. We have a parallelogram, it's two sets of opposite sides parallel. The trapezoid just has one set. You've seen this lovely picture here, all sorts of things written all over it. But we'll get to that. So, big definition here. If you have those little cheat sheets, you should have those out on the side. And you should be writing this definition in there as well. And you don't have to write quite as much, you can just say one pair of parallel sides, because that's what you know is special about the trapezoid. So you have two different types of sides that you can uh, identify with a trapezoid. You have your bases, which are your parallel sides, and you have your legs, which are your non-parallel sides. Bases are parallel, legs are non-parallel. Bases are the big bambinos, those are the important guys. They're going in that same direction, that we're going to intersect if they continue on no matter what. You have your base angles. Base angles are based off of the base. So you have our bottom base here with our legs. A and B are one set of base angles. They go together, they're on the same base. You have your top base here with the same legs. You have your top base here, angle C and angle D are also your other set of base angles. So you have two sets. Bases being the parallel sides, Legs are non-parallel sides. Base angles are angles that are created with the same base. So A and B are base angles, C and D are base angles. I'll give you a second to write that. Come on, stuff. This is like commercial break. Yeah, exactly. All right, isosceles trapezoid. It's a special type of trapezoid. It's a trapezoid with congruent legs. Sure that doesn't cover here. So, we still have the same bases here that are parallel, but the legs are actually congruent to each other. Some special things that are created with that. Because the, the legs here don't have to be congruent. You could have some crazy trapezoids where, kind of like this. I'm going to cut it off. Start that again. Hopefully, that's my one mistake for these notes. So you could have something like that where here are your bases right here and here. And this guy almost looks like a triangle. Partially because of my artwork, partially because of how goofy it looks. Alright, let's continue on. So isosceles trapezoids have special properties. AKA our theorems, but as you can see here, this little kitten's so excited, I'm sure you guys are as well. So, if a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles, I should say, oh yeah, each pair of base angles are congruent. And in the reverse, if you have a trapezoid and you can find that the base angles are congruent, then you know it has to be an isosceles trapezoid. So if you know your base angles are congruent to each other, A and B being congruent to each other, C and D being congruent to each other, find that to be true, then you know you have an isosceles trapezoid. Amazing stuff. Minds are being blown right now. We're going to put all that back together. You'll be okay. And now the kitten goes away. Also, you know you have an isosceles trapezoid if the diagonals are congruent. 
Yes, this is the IFF. Throw it in there again. That's if and only if. So basically, what I'm trying to do here with this situation is I write it once instead of us writing it twice because this is the this is the converse of this, right? Where this is the switch statement of this. The trapezoid is isosceles and the base angles are congruent. If the base angles are congruent, then this is isosceles trapezoid. I make this a lot easier for you condensed by writing this in the if and only if form. So our, our trapezoid is isosceles and the diagonals are congruent. And the reverse, if you find that you have a trapezoid and the diagonals are congruent, then you have an isosceles trapezoid. QRSP is isosceles if and only if. QS is congruent to RP. Exciting stuff. I'm like a ninja. All of a sudden I appear to left then to the right. What's up, nerds? Hi. Say hi to the class. No. Children are reading Palmyra. I don't know what to tell you. <coughs> Lee, you gonna say hi? No. Oh, so rude. A2s. So, we want to find the measure of the three other three interior angles in this isosceles trapezoid. I'm giving away, I should have been asking, like, what kind of trapezoid is this, or what type of shape is this? You said, oh, it's a trapezoid, and then, oh, look, it's isosceles, you've got two congruent legs. I just gave it away to you, silly me. I'm not going to re-record it, so we're stuck. So, what do we talk about with the isosceles trapezoid? Of course, it goes away. I forgot about that. <clears throat> Base angles are congruent. Base angles are congruent. So, We know, this is our base here, we know this angle is 45. Remember if they share the same base, those angles are going to be congruent here. The other angle that shares this base is this top angle. So both of these angles have to be 45 degrees. That was easy. Now it's, how do we figure out these two? Ooh. Well, we have a couple different ways. And I'd like to do the, use the small numbers possible. So, as I like to harp on so often in this class is that everything is built. We're building on the old material that we had. If you remember back when we did parallel lines, and then we had a transversal that intersected those parallel lines, we had special angles that were created. Well, if we look at this angle, we look at this angle, what was that special property that we had here? Same side interior angles. Oh, that's great. Great job, Jacob. Oh my God. Yeah, that same side interior angles. And we know the same side interior angles are supplementary. So these angles are going to add up to 180. So we know that this angle is 45. We need to find this one. We know the two are going to add up to 180, we just subtract 180 minus 45. Now if you have a calculator, you can put that in real fast, just in case. We can take it nice and slow. We put a 10 here, put a 7 there. 10 minus 5, being 5. 7 minus 4, being 3. And 1, and nothing is nothing. So 135. Again, so this angle here is 135. Again, we have a base here, and we have two angles that share it. So this angle is also going to this angle, so we can run to this angle. This also makes it 135. <clears throat> One other way that you could look at it if you forget that concept, you know these two angles are going to be the same. So if you marked it as x, this is a type of quadrilateral, right? We know this is x, this is also x. One other way to solve it, knowing that these angles are going to be the same, it's quadrilateral, you know the angles of quadrilateral out of 360. You can do x plus x plus 45 plus 45 equals 360. You can get away with doing that. If that is the simpler method for you, go with it. It's only going to work in these situations when you have an isosceles trapezoid because both of these angles are going to be the same. If you have a regular trapezoid, 
you're going to need to know more information to solve it this way. But with all trapezoids, at least, you have these two bases here. These two sets of sides are going to have those alternate, I'm sorry, the same side interior angles in all trapezoids. So that will work in all methods, where this is only going to work this easily with an isosceles trapezoid. Plus, it's a lot more work. We're going to add x's together, add the 45's together, have to subtract 360 by 90, divide it by 2. A lot more work. This, 180 minus 45. Let's go to. It's easy. All right. So, mid-segments of a trapezoid. You guys remember talking about mid-segments um, a little bit before. But now we're talking about mid-segment of a trapezoid. A mid-segment is a segment that connects the midpoints of two legs in our trapezoid. So, these are our legs here. Uh, KJ and LM. We connect those two midpoints, the midpoints of each of these, and we create line NO. So as we can see here, NO is going to be parallel with KL and JM. I feel like I must have missed the page because there's great information there. Yep, okay. I guess I just have to give it to you and write it out. So, What's special about the mid-segment, you have two special things. It's parallel with the bases. So NO is going to be parallel with JM and KO. And if you also remember mid-segment, it's right in that middle. So it's about the average of these two. So what you do to find NO, you're going to do half of KL, oh there's a little net, plus JM. Add KL and JM, divide by 2, to find the average, and that'll tell you right where, right where the length of that mid segment is. So in our example here, I gotta move that away, so now I'm probably getting yelled at by someone over here. In fact, I'm covering all this up. But we know JM is 60. We know KL is 40. We're going to follow this method. We know the shorter side is 40, longer side is 60. Mid segment, right in the middle of that, some of you might be just popping that answer in your head. But just in case you don't, let's do the, the work here. So, NL, this is if you're asking me to go to the bathroom right now, say no, is one half. 40 plus 60. 40 plus 60 is 100. And what's half 100? 50. Oh, great. 50, Mr. Hill. There we go. There it is. <laughs> Yay. Oh, uh, see, there's excitement. I'm loving it. Woo! All right. Go, math. Math is awesome, isn't it? All right. Beautiful. All right. Let's talk about the kites a little bit. Kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, but opposite sides are not congruent. So you have consecutive sides that are congruent, but opposite sides are not being congruent. Sounds kind of goofy, but it's called a kite. They call it the kite for the reason. It looks like the kites that you flew when you were little kids. And I forgot to throw the joy of having that disappear. So now I look awkward on video, which is great. There you go. <clears throat> Think about the kites you used to fly as a kid, not the cool ones with like dragon stuff, but you know. Old school back in my day, we used to just make it look like that. Two consecutive congruent sides, but opposite sides are not congruent. <clears throat> so AB is congruent to BC, the two top pieces are congruent to each other, and then CD is congruent to AD, the two bottom pieces. So with the kite, Executive sides are congruent, but opposite sides cannot be. Don't smile, Leah. There you go. That's is fun. It is fun. This is going to be you in a couple years. Learning. Going big. So we're going to solve for X and Y here. Looks crazy, but remember what we said. Executive sides are congruent. It's already marked here for us. We know 3X minus 5 and 40 are going to be equal to each other, so let's set it equal. 3x minus 5 equals 40. Add 5 to both sides. So 3x equals 
45. We have to divide by 3. Now, if you're not remembering exactly, or going off the top of your head and you don't have one of the lovely calculators in your hand, let's just do it by hand. 3 going to 4 one time. 4 minus 3 is 1. Drops down to 5 here. 3 going to 15 5 times. 5 times 3 is 15. Works out perfectly. X is 15. Beautiful stuff, isn't it? Beautiful. But we also have to solve the bottom. So we have 6y plus 8 and 8y minus 16. They're going to be congruent to each other. So 6y plus 8 equals 8y minus 16. Now we've got y's on both sides. We've got to move our y's over on one side. So I like to move my smaller y's over first. Some of you don't, which is okay. So we're going to subtract 8y minus 6y is equal to 2y minus 16. Add 16 to both sides. Eight plus sixteen is twenty-four. Twenty-four equals two y. We're thinking what times two equals twenty-four. Divide by two. Divide by two. Y equals twelve. X is fifteen. Y is twelve. Simple problem. Not any kind of special properties. You just know that this is a kite, so you know your two consecutive sides are congruent here. So we just said our x, our three x minus five equals forty. 6y plus 8 equal to 8y minus 16. And we're getting some answers here. It's, it's lovely. Of course, if you need to right now, it'd be a great time to pause because I'm crazy and I go fast and want to move on. All right. Kites have special properties. Don't smile, Jen. Okay. First property diagonals. They're perpendicular. That sounds like something else we talked about. Maybe that rhombus from yesterday. The diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. Because they form right angles. Four right angles, to be exact. But the diagonals uh, of a kite are perpendicular. You notice here, some little green lines here. That might be leading us to our, our other diagonal property. Should be writing this on your little cheat sheet. Exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle C, but angle B and angle D are not congruent here. So if you notice, the, the non-consecutive sides, angle A and angle C, are both created by the non-consecutive congruent sides, I should say, the non, the consecutive non-congruent sides are the angles that are created that are congruent here. Which is also true with these two, two little pieces here. Of this one diagonal, the one diagonal is actually bisected. But angle A and angle C, they're created by the non congruent consecutive sides. They are congruent to each other. Beautiful stuff. All right. Find the measure of angle S and the measure of angle L. I'm sorry, angle I. So, we know that angle W is 132. We know that angle N is 60. We're looking at this. These, both of these angles are created by their congruent sides, each by a set of congruent sides, right? So these, these two have to be congruent to each other because, well, first of all, these two aren't. So one set of opposite angles are congruent. And since this is a 132 and this is 60, we know that both of these have to be the same. So, all sorts of fun stuff here. We know they're going to be the same. We can mark them both as x if we like. We know that the angles of a quadrilateral, any quadrilateral, which includes this kite, will add up to 360. So we know x plus x plus 132. How are you? How are you? Plus 60 equals 360. It's kind of killer. I don't have much of a pause button here. So, uh... Are you ready? Yeah. Keep Alright, now, now there's all sorts of eyes on I mean, this is getting extra exciting. Alright, so we add, we have 2x plus 192 equals 360. I'll let you guys solve from here. We 
can go over in class. And then our last question here is, what's the difference between a trapezoid and a kite? Great lesson today. Rewatch and pause as needed. Have a great day.